Hello YouTube. So today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial of how you can migrate your existing website onto an Amazon AWS EC2 instance. Uh, now there are several reasons why you might want to do this. One of them is that your servers might just be running slow and users might be complaining that your, your site is not responsive enough. If you are running a blog, this is a very common situation. Or it might even be that you have many users on your site at the same time. Consider a, a blog that you might be running. You might have up to a thousand, two thousand users that's slowing your website down. And if this is the case, then a shared server is just going to throw you out, throw you out of the server itself and bring down your website. Uh, you might, might, might want more control of your website. A shared instance typically provided by a blue host or a host gator does not give you complete control over your website. If this is something you're looking for, then yes, uh, a dedicated instance from Amazon is what you're looking out for. You might want to install an SSL certificate, so that might be the reason that you're looking to migrate your server out. Um, this gives you great advantage when it comes to your Google page listing, or even for that matter, the speed, uh, the Google speed test. So the first step that you will need to do is, is uh, you need to make a copy of your entire website. And this is very easy. If you have a cPanel access, all you have to do is select all your files and then compress them. So what effectively happens is that you land up with a link that you can download the entire zipped file structure from. You need to follow the same process for your SQL database as well. Um, in the case of an SQL database, you need to log on to phpMyAdmin, download the SQL file, and then what you need to do is zip it and up upload it back into your cPanel. And the reason I'm telling you to do this is because most of you are broadband users out there. The download is pretty fast, but when you try to uh, upload it back into the server, it can get very slow and lead to a lot of failures. If you notice, if you run a website which has a lot of data in it, the database size is going to be significantly big. And I've seen instances where you have a 45 MB file reduced uh, right up to just a 1 MB file in the final process. Um, so I'm going to show you how you do, uh, do these steps. And once you're done with these two steps, you will notice that both these links should be downloadable. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be logging into my cPanel. And I have it open over here. And this is typically how a cPanel looks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my file manager, go on to my web route. Okay, so I have a listing of all my files over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select all and there is a compress button over here. All I'm going to do is just compress it and I'm going to select a zipped archive and you can see the path where it is going to come in and over here what I'm going to do is it's going to be called as the WP static. And while that is being done, I forgot to mention, what I'm doing is I'm transferring my WordPress site, which looks like this. And this is the site that I'm going to be migrating it onto an EC2 instance. And this is a fresh install that I made just for the purpose of this demo. And as you can see, the compression is complete. And I can see that there is a, a zip file for me with my entire static file files. And this is 6.27 MB. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log on to my cPanel again. And this time I'm going to uh, start up my PHP my admin. And there we go. And it should take me right into the database. And over here, I'm going to compress. Uh, I'm just going to download the plain SQL file that contains my uh, the complete database itself. And I'm going to save this onto uh, my desktop. And then what I'm going to do is upload it back into cPanel. So you can just select the, uh, the export option. And this is the settings that you would want to do. Just take it as custom. You can take it as the, uh, the database name and I'm going to call this, I'm going to leave all of this just the same. I'm going to do compression none. And the format is 
or rather I can just take it as a zipped file SQL format and I'm going to compress it and there we go so I have my SQL file over here that I'm going to just copy onto my desktop as you can see the file did not compress itself so what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress it from my end and I have the zip file and I'm going to call this wp-zip uh, I'm sorry wp-database.zip and you can see the size difference so over here it, this is approximately 434 kb whereas the zipped file is just going to be 111 kb so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this uh, zipped file back to my file manager and I can just go over here click on upload select the file and that should be done okay there we go so we have the wp-db and wp-static so what you would need to do to check if these files are successfully uploaded is go back into your domain and check if these files are available and yes so the database is available and what I'm going to do is to check if the static files are available and so there we go so both the files are available and now we can move on to our next step so this brings us to the second step of the process and in this process what we're going to do is we're going to start up the servers we're going to check for the necessary ports if they're open and what you should see is your default Apache page at the end of this process. Now, I'm not going to get into great detail about starting up the servers and to uh, check the ports as such, but what you can do is check my other video tutorial on to how to start your servers. So I'm going to log into uh, my server via SSH right now. And for that, I'm going to pull up terminal and over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give in the commands to uh, log in. And that's logged in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the process to install PHP and MySQL. And for that, here are the commands. You will find a link at the bottom of this page, which has all the commands that I've used so you can just copy paste them to start up your servers and have PHP and MySQL installed. Now I've installed PHP and MySQL. Now I'm going to start up my HTTP uh, Apache server as well as my MySQL server. So oh, I'm sorry. And just to check again, okay, so both of them have started. So, what you should see is the default Apache page. If you go on to the IP address of your site, so let me just pull that up and let's just check if the site loads. And there it is. So you have a server started, you have PHP MySQL installed, and uh, the server is running fine. So next what we're going to do is we are going to uh, copy the files into this server. Okay, now coming on to the third step of the process, uh, what you need to do is we are going to use the wget command and migrate your files from your existing cPanel server onto your newly created EC2 instance. Now, as you remember, we did uh, we did create a static .zip file as well as a db .zip file, and these are the files that you're going to copy over. Now, the reason I do this in this process is it makes sense uh, for you to migrate the files between the servers itself 
because all of these servers are connected to a very high speed uh, internet backbone. The only other way to do this is you will have to download the zip files and then upload it back into EC2 using file zip up. Uh, and all, all that is a very slow process. So imagine your site is somewhere around 2 GB. Transferring that data is going to take you quite a bit of time. But if you let the servers communicate among each other, then this process can be done really quick. So let me jump right into it. So CD var www and HTML. Okay, there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wget command. So wget and HTTP colon. And the domain that I'm using is drive new. This is the website that we're looking to uh, migrate, the WordPress website. Dot in forward slash and wp dash static dot and you see that there is a cannot write issue permission to manage so to solve this is a very critical step this means that you do not have access to the folder so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take up ownership for this folder and this is done by ch own And so I'm going to give uh, EC2 dash, sorry, you have to put a sudo before this. So it's going to become sudo cho EC2 dash user and the path. And that's done. So we'll just execute the previous step again. And there we go. So now you can see that the static files are being transferred. We'll just wait while that gets over. And now we are going to move the database file in. So db.zip. And that should bring the database right in. Now we'll just have a quick look if the files are there. And there they are. And one thing you should remember is now is the time that you, you should, uh, from this point on to the next step, you will find that if there are any changes being made to your live site, then this delta changes is not going to make it to your existing site. So it would make sense if you could write up a script file to do this really quickly. And now we are going to move on to the four steps, which uh, the fourth step, that is to unzip your files. So what we are going to be doing in the next step is simply to unzip both the database files as well as your static files. Once you unzip your static files, you will notice it's a replica of your uh, files, which is there in cPanel. And for the database file, you should land up with a single SQL file that you are going to import into uh, the SQL server in the next step. So let me just quickly show you how you do that. So the commands are pretty simple. So you just unzip and wp-db.zip and that is done and now if you look at it you will see that there is a localhost.sql that's perfectly fine and now let's unzip the static files so wp-static.zip and there we go so we have a list of your uh, static files as well as of your uh, database files. So now if you try to visit the IP address directly, uh, it should throw some kind of an error. Well, let's just have a look at that as well quickly. So let me just pull that up. And there you go. This is the error that you're going to get. This is because technically the database does not exist. So uh, the server is going to check into the configuration file and then see that the database doesn't exist. So let me take you through the steps to import the database next. Okay, so now we come into the step five of the database import process. So what we're going to do is we're going to import that SQL file into your MySQL server, which has been created in the EC2 instance. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward step. So I'm just going to show you how to create the database and import that file. And once we are done with this step, then we have to go into the WP config file and make the necessary changes. So let me just show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're 
going uh, going to log into uh, MySQL and for that what I'll do is my I'm gonna go back to my same path itself and I'm going to log into MySQL and notice that I'm giving the path uh, the user over here as root and the password as just blank and you can just press enter and if I do show databases you should notice that there are some default databases so let's go ahead and create a new database so I'm going to create database and I'm going to name it drive new and this is because I know that my existing site already has the same database name so drive new and sure enough it's been created I'll just do a show databases and there it is so the next step that you uh, that you would need to do is to import the database from your SQL file so I'm going to exit from here and what I'm going to type is my SQL dash u and root as the user password as blank and the newly created database name that's drive new and I'm going to import the local host dot SQL just click enter and the database has been imported so now what uh, what you should do is log uh, we are going to use the VI editor to see your WP config file and so for that I'm going to put a sudo vi wp dash config dot php and there it is so the database I'm going to be using is drive new so nothing has changed over there and you can see that the username should be root and the password is going to be blank and the rest of it is going to remain just the same so I'm going to exit from here now if I try to load my uh, site what you would notice that is the site should work so that's the IP address and sure enough the site has been migrated but if you try to click on any one of these links you will notice that it goes back into my previous site and this is because the domain mapping is not has not been done so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my GoDaddy account and just change the A record so that drive new always points to this particular server.